Welcome to the channel rather dubiously called Rufio. I'm the best Yugi tuber in my street, a very average player who uses this platform to trick you into thinking I'm good at and capable of playing Yu-Gi-Oh on any kind of level at all. Before we get started, why don't you hit subscribe for me, even if it's not because you secretly enjoy bad content, but because you pity me. I need every bit of help I can get. Hi guys, this is Joe here from Rufio, bringing you my deck profile from what I took to the Brotherhood Regional in London this past weekend. Now, uh, I certainly didn't have a good result, so please don't take this as one of those deck profiles where I'm trying to show you how you should run the deck. I'm just hoping to give people some information so that they can see about what went well for me, what, what didn't work so well, and hopefully that can reflect in their own deck building, their own testing to see what's worth testing, what's maybe not worth testing, and learn from some of my mistakes and from some of the good that came from the tournament. If if you do want a full rundown of how my results went you can go back and check out the vlog that i did for the tournament and get an honest and open answer to how things went uh, i'll be straight with you guys it wasn't a good result uh, i do feel it was largely due to the deck bricking so maybe your experience is different i just know for me that this has been absolutely horrendous this whole weekend um and i, I don't i don't really know what it is that i could change that maybe should have been different maybe you guys are running the build differently i don't know i'm personally done with the deck um this weekend was an absolute shit show to be quite straight with you um I, I think the only game that I lost that wasn't due to, to Bricken... Well, actually, there was two. Uh, one, I lost to Floodgates, uh, which there was nothing I could really do about it. Uh, and the other one was to Spiral, which was just straight up the better deck. Um, every other game I played, if I didn't Brick, I won. Uh, and if I Bricked, I lost. And unfortunately, I honestly think maybe half of my hands in the whole tournament were Bricks, which makes absolutely no sense when you look at what the deck build is. Maybe you guys will see something that I'm not really sure about, but everyone else who's looked has not really seen maybe that there's any issues maybe it is just the nature of the deck now since it's been hit on the list uh but yeah anyway enough enough moaning about the deck we'll show you exactly what i played and i'll show you what was good and what was bad uh so i'll get stuck into it and we'll start off with the monsters okay so starting off here so we'll start with the orcus package so uh we've got one bombard uh and apologies if there is any glare we've got a really big light up here and uh, we've got the one bombard uh, i felt one was sufficient uh i started off originally building this deck with three uh three was way too much it was just sat in my hand doing nothing then i went to two with like one for one so i could just get it into the grave nice and easy uh so i could you know just summon it and link it off into link rebo uh but one ended up being sufficient they ended up just getting kind of cloggy so one was more than enough um and i definitely stick with that decision we had Triple Symbol Skeleton. Uh, I always wanted to see this card, uh, usually in my grave, of course. Uh, if you open it in your hand, it's kind of sad, but there was plenty of ways to get rid of it, which you'll see later in the deck. Um, and yeah, I felt the three was correct. I wouldn't change this either. I think that this was absolutely perfect. I played Triple Orcus Nightmare. Uh, again, I felt like I really just wanted to play two because this was just horrible to have in your hand. But at the same time, you needed to see it and you needed to make sure that you can keep using them because the deck just doesn't have the same ability to grind. It can still grind, but not to the same degree. And this allows you to just stay in the game for longer. And there are many decks out there which can grind really well at the moment. Uh, two copies of World Legacy World Wand. Uh, this was one that I actually had at one, uh, and it was absolutely correct to me to change this. Uh, I was advised to change it up to two so we could have additional copies, uh, and 100% that was the correct decision. Uh, two is absolutely perfect. What a lot of people don't realize as well is that when this goes to the grave, uh, like you can send it off for a cycler. If you have one of these in hand, you can actually just special summon the other one. Every single time I did that, nobody did anything to try and stop it or anything like that. They literally read the card and went, I didn't know it even did that. So <laughs> you get a free body on board, and nobody is going to stop you almost certainly and then finally our pseudo uh our honorary uh, orcus card which is gives uh this card was absolutely awesome it did put in a really good shift for me this card's insane in every single deck i've played it in it is worth the eight card banish like if you're going to lose this saves you uh, the amount of times where my opponent would leave just one vulnerable monster on the field and it was big uh, and i'd just summon this in the end phase next turn banish three pop it and then go for game uh, a lot of the time when i won this was the cause of my wins uh 100 you have to run this i don't know whether i would run more than that uh maybe if i change the engine slightly um to try and make like hard dingy issues and things like that but otherwise i think one is absolutely fine you can get it engraved enough and if you do happen to see it in your hand it doesn't really matter uh that is it for the orcus package in the deck we then move on to the scraps so we've got triple scrap recycler i think this is mandatory uh, i think this brings our actual like normal summons that we actually ever do up to like five or maybe six uh, which is pretty much perfect 
Scrap recycle is insane. It's also not once per turn, so if you do keep bringing it back, uh, yeah, it's just nutty. Uh, the combo with this is really, really nice. It's a one card Appaloosa, as long as you've got something you can destroy on the field uh, and that you don't open the Golem, which you will, because that's how these things work, because Golem is like glue. It is the, this fucking fridge, man. This is like the biggest brick in the world, uh, but it's so, so important to run. Uh, I would definitely not recommend running it without this. It is, it, the benefits of being able to get it out onto the board and get the extension that you get from this way 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 outweighs the negative of seeing it in your hand as is much the case with many garnets in this game you know that they're important as part of an engine to which you'll benefit to no end to be able to play them and then finally one card that does also go with this package is mecha phantom beast o-line i know some people have been using the uh synchron is it jet synchron or something like that i don't know the issue with that card is that when it goes to the grave people can just like hit it with crow before it can activate and there's nothing you can do about it whereas this hits the grave and then just immediately summons the the, the tuner which is really really nice uh, i know some people prefer the other one for me this is absolutely perfect and you should run this one uh, it allows you to go into so many different combos which i have done a combo video just to cover the basics if you're not sure how those work uh, which i'm not sure if it'll be up after or before this but we'll wait and see uh, go check that out if you're not sure and i'm sure there's plenty of other tutorials the combos are really really easy to to remember and work out but they are absolutely insane this just turning into one card like appaloosa into uh you can go into cherubini you can go into uh curious whatever you need it can just make it and it's really really insane i would definitely not cut this in any way i did find on rare occasions i would slide this out as well where i felt that they were just getting too cloggy and i had enough ways to get stuff into the grave um but it wasn't too often um yeah and I think that package is pretty much mandatory at this stage. Definitely don't run the recyclers without the uh, without the golem, in my opinion. Then we move on to the danger lineup. Uh, so we got two jackalope, uh, two snake, one bigfoot and one Nessie. So uh, discussion about the ratios here. So just a quick note of how I sort of came to this conclusion of how I wanted to run these. Uh, the issue for me was that like, I wanted to be able to dig a little bit deeper firstly because I did realize that there was some bricking issues. Definitely not to the extent, I mean, this was my first uh, event with the deck. Uh, so I didn't realize to what degree it was bad. Uh, and I only realized when I got there. Uh, but Jack Hope and Snake are just really nice. They're free bodies on board. They can help you go into Cherubini. Uh, and all of these can obviously help you going to curious bigfoot gives you an option if you're forced to go second um and just the fact that it's a level eight is really nice as well because you can hard make dingyasu if you need to as well later on uh and of course it just helps you dig it's a big body uh, and then nessie of course searches uh, whichever one of these you need it's also really nice if you do get stuck under like floodgates and that kind of thing it's just a way of being able to out them or out a problematic monster that isn't protected from card effects it's just a good way to do it and just get another body on board uh, and the rest of the danger stuff is kind of just self-explanatory uh, i opted not to run like mothman and stuff because i didn't want to unbrick my opponent's hands and didn't want to give them the option to draw um i can see why people do like it but uh it's not perfect in this deck and you're not really running any like rank fours or anything so there's no real benefit there i hate chupacabra because you open it in every hand and you don't see any other dangers and uh yeah it just never does anything so i, I just left it out and this was perfect for me uh, the only one you could consider cutting was bigfoot i just wanted the extra numbers uh, and of course i had the most utility out of basically what was left that i felt would would benefit this deck in some way Finally, we move on to our warrior package. So we've got the Phantom Knights of Silent Boots. This is to allow us to go into the VFD play, which is absolutely insane. Every time I resolved it, I just won the game. It was crazy. Uh, we have the one Armageddon Knight. It's Armageddon Knight. It's it's just nuts. Uh, there's no explaining needed. Uh, and then the one Dark Greffa. Uh, this helps unclog your hand. Helps you get Orca's stuff in Grave. I actually use this way more than this. Like, this is nice if you don't see anything else. But actually, this was by far the better card I felt in the deck. Uh, it has the ability to be able to do all of these things. Obviously, it has to ditch. But being able to, like, send a one to Grave or a Nightmare to Grave to summon this. Uh, and then being able to ditch another card from hand. Say, like, a Skeleton or another Orcus card that's clogging you up. Uh, and then send any card of your choice to Grave maybe a silent boots or whatever to facilitate that play a lot of the time when i saw this in my opening hand this was just like the best option to go with 100 uh, percent greffer is awesome uh, and i really like this i wouldn't cut any of these these were these were perfect and of course i guess at worst case scenario they become a lower target if you need to get rid of them Next, we move on to the spell lineup. So we are running the one Phantom Knights Rank Up Magic Launch. Uh, VFD is just insane. So many people, for some reason, again, didn't know what was happening. Maybe they just didn't prep very well for the event. Uh, but so many people just... <sighs> They just didn't know what to do when they said the field. They were not ready for it. They were reading it like, I don't know what this does. A lot of people didn't even realize it was unbanned. It somehow went under the radar. Maybe those guys just don't pay much attention. 
Uh, but resolving VFD during your opponent's turn is just absolutely filthy to get it on board. Getting to Dingir do something away uh, and then VFD them is just absolutely nuts. It's so much free value. This card's broken. I very rarely opened it, and when I did, I still managed to resolve it okay. It was only maybe once or twice I didn't. Uh, but every time I resolved this and got VFD on board, I won the game. So, pretty good. Uh, we then have the one copy of Babel. This is still just correct to have the one. It can recur itself anyway. Hardly, hardly any of the time this actually ever gets popped anymore. I found that a lot of the time uh, I was actually getting evenly matched so much over the weekend. Like, people were maining it, choosing to go second. Uh, and a lot of the time this would be the card that I have to ke keep on the field uh, just so I could continue to play the next turn. Um, but yeah, this card's really, really important in the deck. Obviously, the quick effects are you know what makes this deck good uh what makes this deck tick uh so absolutely you need to play this and i don't think that more than what is necessary we then have triple allure of darkness so uh, allure was a bit of a love hate thing for me so it's nice being able to obviously dig deep into the deck and that was the idea here uh, but a lot of the time i find myself siding one of these out like i know i've got a ton of darks the, the issue i'm finding with this is that it actually doesn't offer you as much value as i maybe thought it would once have um like, when you're running stuff like Thunder Dragons for a while and that kind of thing, and you can banish and gain so many pluses off it. Whereas this, like, a lot of the time you're banishing stuff, you don't really want to banish. You kind of want it engraved. Like, there are some niche interactions where, like, you can banish the Orcus Nightmare, and it allows you to make, like, a wand live and things like that. But really, otherwise, it just doesn't do a whole lot. A lot of the time I was having to, like, banish, say, uh, a Gizmek, which was nice and healthy, but it allowed me to stay in the game. So I guess from one perspective, it's good. But from the other, it isn't necessarily as good as I... I, I had hoped that I would feel it would be. I've always been a big, big, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Advocate of using Lure of Darkness in these kind of decks. Uh, but actually, it, it really wasn't the best card uh, for me to choose. I would probably cut this to two, um, or maybe even altogether if there's a better option out there. Although I don't really know what that is at this stage. Uh, I opted to run two copies of Orchestrated Return. Uh, I was running three for the longest time, and then I found that I was actually just bricking on it. Like a lot of the time, it was like, just clogging my hand up and, and having multiple sucked. I mean, you can essentially search it anyway off your Galatea after turn one anyway. Uh, if you do see it, unclogs your hand, which is nice to draw. Uh, but two was absolutely perfect. Three was way too much before two was nice. Uh, and I wouldn't run any less than that. We have one upstart goblin because running a 39 card deck is better than running a 40 card deck. Uh, if you don't understand why that's true, then uh, you've got problems. Just go online. Look at the look at the maths behind running an upstart goblin instead. It's just way better. Uh, I would absolutely recommend anyone that's running the deck to run 40 with that. You can call me Patrick Coben. I'll take that compliment. But that's not it for our draw spells. We actually ran two more. Uh, this is something that I'd had my eye on before it got released. As soon as I saw it, I knew it was going to be insane. A few of us had talked about running it in different decks and trying to find space for it. I found space for it, and it was arguably one of the best cards in my deck the whole weekend. This. Performer Pal Popper Up. So this card, uh, it came in the new set, the one with the uh, Magician Soul. Uh, I got these for free off someone. Someone gave me a play set. Uh, this card is insane. So basically how it works is... It has an, uh, like some scale effect which nobody cares about, but what it essentially says is discard up to three cards, or send up to three cards from your hand to the graveyard, draw up to three cards, depending on how many you sent, and then you take a thousand damage for each one that you drew. That's essentially what it says. Now, obviously there's so many interactions with this that I could go through and I'm sure you can pretty much see them ahead of time. Dumping Orcus, dumping bricks into Grave, being able to dig deeper into your deck, and you take a few thousand life point damage. Nobody cares. Like, if you understand how this game works, everybody knows that life points don't matter until you run out of them. They are a resource to be used, and this card is a perfect example of how to do it. It's also better than stuff like card destruction, uh, because you don't want to give your opponent, like, free advantage, being able to ditch maybe a brick hand they've opened that you would have won the game. Sometimes you give them a hand trap, and then you end up losing. Uh, so cards like this are insane. I would highly recommend everyone runs this. I would actually probably consider up this to three it is a once per turn effect but i would much rather see this in my opening hand like every time and just have it sat there for as and when i need it or if i can make it live from the get-go then i can just combo off and make my board unbreakable this card's insane absolutely i would recommend if you're not testing this yet test it it may be even in other decks if you can find the space for it or you can find the the benefits of dumping the cards and drawing which is most decks now i would highly recommend running this card i cannot stress this enough you must run this card and that's it for draw spells. We do have a few more spells left, though. We're running Triple Call by the Grave. Uh, this was quite good, actually, over the whole weekend. There was a lot of hand traps. Uh, I don't think I got impermanence even once the whole weekend, so it didn't matter. Uh, I did get Gamut a few times, so be aware of those. But the rest of the time, it was like Veilers, Ash, 
crows and this kept me in the game it was also good against stuff like spiral because of course you can just hit any of the important cards any of the recursion cards like master plan uh, and that kind of stuff uh, it's good against like weird road decks like ba against dinos that kind of thing uh, it just it's a blowout against so many decks i really really liked it uh, i can see why people wouldn't run it but it, it was really good for me when it did come up uh, and then finally we have our two power cards we have foolish burial and reinforcements of the army i'm sure i don't need to elaborate on these uh a lot of the time when you open this with recycler it's nice because you just let the mash the recycler you don't care because then you just activate this uh, and then you carry on like normal and rota helps you search obviously being able to get greffa unclog your hand armageddon knight to start your plays off as well uh, or of course you can get uh phantom knights uh silent boots in your hand and get that play going as well and that is it for spell cards and then finally we just have the one trap pretty predictably orcish crescendo i actually hardly ever saw this i hardly ever felt the need to actually search it uh, a lot of the time i first go to of course was babel um and a lot of the time this just didn't come up uh it, it wasn't really necessary it came up a couple of times but like it was okay like when it comes up it's nice but it's it's not crucial to actually see anymore i don't think uh, with the way the rest of the deck works so moving on to the extra deck uh, this was really really tight there was a few changes i made last minute some of them were nice some of them weren't so nice uh, but i'll just cover what i use now so i had link Rebo in here this actually like was rare it didn't come up a lot but it's kind of one of those cards that i feel like you just have to have there like if nothing else you can get your play side i think once or twice i had like a droll in hand and had nothing else because i bricked and then i could just make link Rebo and then get something else in grave and start my plays or you can start off with a bombard get bombard into grave banish it summon an orcus from hand make galatarian and go about your plays it's really important for that kind of interaction we have one copy of mascarena this is really nice when you end on this uh with being able to ding your opponent the next turn link this off or ding your opponent vfd and then link this off it's like it's absolutely insane uh it's cards really really nice when you can get into it uh it didn't come up as much as i'd hoped but when it came up it was really really nice ip mascarine is just awesome it's worth the price tag we have one copy of cherubini this is something i actually wasn't running right up until a few days before the event uh and i was relying on like curious and things like that and i felt that that wasn't consistent enough and that was one of my gripes of curious but we'll cover that in a moment uh cherubini was awesome when it came up it was insane it didn't come up a lot but when it did it just guaranteed that i could see that vfd combo uh, and of course when you see the vfd combo you normally win the game we have one copy of Scrap Live, and this was actually my most common go-to link. Uh, I'd start off with this play, uh, dump an Orcus into Grave, and then go about my plays like normal. I'd make Appaloosa and just protect myself from Big Rock. Uh, I only got nabiru uh I think, three times in the whole tournament, and twice was in the same against the same guy. Uh, and that was at the stage where I had so, such a loaded Grave, I didn't care if he nabiru me. I just let him give me the big nugget, and then I killed him anyway. Uh, we're running two copies of Galatea. I can see the argument for making this a three of. Uh, I didn't feel I had the space. I wanted the extra utility. Uh, I think there was only maybe one time I felt like I needed a third one because you could just recycle these. It is not nice when you get yourself in a position where you do need to see the third. Um, but two is perfectly sufficient for most of it. And the added utility probably won me more games than I lost by not having the third available to me. We have one copy of Long Gear Suit. It didn't come up an awful lot, maybe once or twice, being able to just send cards. Uh, but again, I feel like it's one of those cards that when you've run out of like Galatea's and stuff, it's just another way to be able to make like Dingirsu or to, to get rid of problematic monsters. It's just got some added benefits. Um, it was okay. I think you just kind of need to have it there. It feels like a bit of a placeholder card, but you kind of need to play it. We have one copy of Curious. Curious was shite, um, which I never thought I'd say about this card. It's actually usually pretty insane. Uh, but a lot of the time, like, when you could make this, like, I could never really make it off the dangers. I didn't see enough of them for it to count. Like, I think if I played more dangers, this would have been better. Um, but when I saw the scrap combo, I rarely felt that I needed to do this because I was able to send the orchestras I needed to Grave. I guess the only potential advantage is if I had more extenders in hand, I could use this to send Phantom Knights. Uh, and if I've already got Orcus engraved, then of course I can finish on the full combo. Um, I don't know. It just didn't come up a lot for me. I would probably... I'd probably test without this, if I'm being straight and honest with you. Um, maybe your experience is different. I just didn't see it come up enough for me, personally. Uh, one copy of Nightmare Unicorn. Just a really good utility card. Again, when you're locked into darks and you need that card to just sort of out their board a little bit when you're getting desperate, this card always comes in clutch. We have one copy of Boral Sword. Uh, again, it's just a win button. I didn't use it loads, maybe like twice the whole tournament. Uh, but when it comes up, it wins the game. 
We have one zero Boris. I don't think I actually resolve this at all over this weekend, but weirdly in like all of my locals and stuff, this came up a lot. Uh, I would probably keep it in even though it didn't really come up because I just feel like uh, the amount of advantage it offers you by being able to banish everything, like sure, you sometimes lose your Babel and a couple of other bits, but uh, you normally get this back next turn. They've got a clear board or maybe like one monster if you time it right. Um, and then they end up in a situation where you've got like a 7,000 attack beat or something stupid. Uh, and they've got like maybe a set monster if they're lucky. You can just ding it away because you're going to have like a lot of stuff in Grave and just kill them. When it does come up, it's insane. Appaloosa, one of the most important cards. Uh, I probably summon this like at least every single match. Uh, probably not every single game, but like... A minimum of one game in every match, I would say that this came up. Sometimes twice. Um, yeah, it's just really nuts. Really good card. And finally, we round off with our Xyz. So we've got two copies of Dingirsu. I think two is mandatory now. Uh, you can hard make this in kind of niche scenarios, but it never really happens. But you do want the second one in case one ever gets hit or banished away or whatever. Uh, and you can kind of just rotate through them. So two is nice. Uh, and then finally, we have one True King of All Calamities. This card should have been banned. I said before the list even dropped that they could take this fucking card and year into oblivion with uh, whatever the fuck that uh, Azathot is and all that shit. Kali, you could take them all throw them in the bin but i guess whilst they're here we're going to abuse them and get free wins so next we move on to the side deck uh we are running triple copies of droll uh the the kind of side deck choices that i've gone for was the theory that if i had to play spiral i had to try and be able to win um like i mean you should be able to try and win against any deck but i felt like they were the big elephant in the room uh and i played one all day and actually there were so many people i talked to like it was definitely in and around the top cut but pretty much anywhere below that like spiral just wasn't to be seen so you were playing like insane rogue decks like I think every single game I played was a different one. Uh, I had like eight different decks I played against, like Yosenju, Zombie, Cyber Dragon, Spiral, uh, Evil Eye, Cosmo. Like it was just insane. Like it was so wild. Burning Abyss. Like I played eight different decks, and most of the other people I spoke to had the same sort of experience. But Droll was in there for if you found that matchup, or there are, of course, certain decks that just auto lose to this anyway. I think it's really important to have on the side. It's probably going to be one of the most important hand traps in the format, particularly at like a regional and above level. Uh, you should definitely have this available to your side. I didn't think it was necessary to main. Uh, maybe if I felt like I was going in with a deck that would guarantee me or put me close to the top spots, uh, which I wasn't convinced of this deck would, so maybe that was part of my uh, losing mentality or whatever. Maybe I could have done things better, who knows. Um, but Droll is, is something that you should have available to you. Next, we move on to some of the spell choices. So I decided to run Triple Mystic Mine. Uh, so there's a few thoughts behind this. So uh, in my experience so far, using the Biru against uh, decks like Spiral, uh, it doesn't really work very well because they just they, they just extend through it. They have so much leverage. It's just unreal. Um, so the idea was, was that if I knew I was going to be going second against Spiral, I'd side this in, I'd slap this down, I'd do what I needed to do because my board would be kept smaller than theirs, uh, and then I'd eventually just break the board and then just pop mine and go and then kill them. Uh, that was the idea. I actually, every time I sided this in, it never ended up in my hand, so I can't comment on how well that would work, but I think at least in theory, uh, it's a good idea. The other thing to consider as well is like stuff like Dark Ruler No More, which I was running before, uh, it says you can't win. Like You can, you can uh, obliterate their entire board, but they're Spiral, right? So they've got like this entire recursion. If you do it against like Orcus, they've got all this recursion. Any of the good decks are able to recur and recover from like a, a Dark Ruler No More situation or a Nobiru if you can't kill them off. Um, and I didn't want to risk that, whereas Mystic Mine uh, put me in a position where I could save myself. Uh, and I guess, in theory, like if I bricked and only saw this, that I could survive for a few turns to see the cards I needed to set my board up and go in for the kill. Uh, so it was good in theory. I think a lot of people are going to be moving to this. So don't be surprised if we're going to see Mystic Mine in a lot of decks. I was running two copies of Galaxy Cyclone. This is actually something I'd seen in another profile. Uh, not necessarily for the same reasons that I'm running it. My theory with this was uh, that obviously back row removal is kind of important in this format. There are a few decks out there, such as Alt Guys, that can give you a really tough time. Uh, this helps just force like activations, removals, that kind of thing. But having it set in the grave, uh, just for when they put important stuff on the field, like 
uh, let's say you're going to spiral and they leave the resort face up on the field you can pop it uh, and things like that but also if you do go into the mine play it gives you a way to out your own mine early as and when you need to and then carry on about your plays uh, it was nice in theory again uh, the only time I saw it uh, it came up in the spiral matchup I popped his back row but then he ended up killing me anyway so I didn't get to sort of benefit from the full effect I ran two copies of Twin Twisters. I really don't think this deck matters with discarding stuff because, well, you want most of it in the grave anyway. Uh, I didn't have the space for three because there was a few other cards I really felt I needed to run. Uh, so, I mean, between these two and the Galaxy Cyclones, I had like four different copies of back row removal just just like this um and there's certain matchups where one's better than the other or you don't need loads uh, there's times where you're in a matchup where you don't feel like you want to be able to discard because you want to keep your cards in hand uh and then of course you could run the others instead but two was absolutely fine again when it came up it was good because it's twin twisters we then ran two copies of Evenly Matched. This, again, was a space issue. I really wish I'd run three. So, so many people were maining this in their deck at the event. It was absolutely wild and insane. Um, yeah, it was crazy. Like, I got Evenly Matched, I think, honestly, in game one, uh, maybe five or six times throughout the tournament. It was wild. Like... <laughs> Uh, I just wasn't prepped for it, and uh, if there's one bit of information I'd like to give to you guys to be ready for, it's this card. A lot of people are opting to go second, or even maining it, so that they, they're going to opt to go first when they can, but if they lose a the dice roll, they're ready to just blow you out. Like, it's insane. Uh, this card is back with full force. Uh, you should at the very least have it in your side, in my opinion, but a lot of decks are finding the space to main it. And finally, we finished on Triple Solemn Judgment. So this, again, was something that I was considering not running. Uh, this was advice that came from Grandpa, which if you're a UK player and you know him, you know he's good. He's one of the old school great players. Uh, I won't go into any more detail than that because he likes to be kept all mysterious. But uh, Solemn Judgment was a recommendation by him, and he was absolutely correct. Um, I've always said in the past whenever I play this card that it's absolutely wild. Like, every time you resolve it, it, it a lot of the time it leads to game. Like, if you open it, you can just stop the most important play it can end a turn it's honestly like i really believe it's one of my most skillful cards in the game uh if you don't know when to use it it can cost you so many games but if you use it right like you just outright win um really really good what what happened a lot of the time is i'd side this in uh if i knew i could force going first or if they were going to force you to go first and then i'd set up the vfd play and i'd set this so then I could solemn if they tried to stop the VFD. Or if I knew that they were likely to evenly me, I would just hold it. And I'd do, go about my plays. I'd just sit and wait. Uh, and then they'd just flip this. And then they wouldn't be able to play it because they were relying on the evenly to get them back into the game. And of course, this would crush them. So solemn judgment is still insanely strong. Pay off your life when it doesn't matter if you win the game. Who cares? Uh, and... Honestly, something that people should maybe consider even maining. Like, if they again, if they've got the room uh, and it isn't going to interrupt, like, their combo ability and that kind of thing, uh, this is going to be a really, really good card this format because of stuff like evenly matched being so prevalent. Uh, this is going to help you just play through those. And that is it for the actual deck profile, guys. Uh, like I say, this isn't intended to be a you should run this or try this out or whatever. Um, it's just one of those things where I felt like maybe I could give people honest feedback on how I felt the tournament went uh, and the things that I would change and that kind of stuff and just sort of see how it goes from there. Hopefully you guys can benefit from all the information that came from this uh, and it's going to help you improve the deck build that you're going to go with, uh, all of that kind of stuff. So hopefully you've enjoyed this. Hopefully it's been informative in some way. Hopefully you can benefit from my uh, woeful tournament experience. Even though the actual Brotherhood region itself, big shout out to them. It's an awesome event. It's always packed. Our biggest regional we usually get here in the UK. Uh, I'd highly recommend if you're in the UK and you're considering going to a regional, that's probably the one to go to. Um, but yeah, like I say, I really feel like this deck's in kind of a weak place at the moment. Maybe there's better plays out there than me that can pilot it to some success or maybe can figure out the secret source to get it going again. But I feel like the the heart hit is actually way more impactful than people are giving it. Uh, the credit for uh, Konami really did a number on the deck with this. Uh, and probably if they'd hit anything else, this deck would be completely dead. Uh, I think it's okay at like a like a local level maybe but even then you're gonna lose stupid matches because it just bricks so uh that is it for my thoughts guys uh hopefully like i say this has benefited you in some way uh if you haven't already please hit subscribe and i'll see you in the next one thank you for watching hopefully you've enjoyed the garbage content i put together for you enough to hit subscribe and maybe even drop a thumbs up and a comment before you go, be sure to check out the links in the description to help support the people who are making this channel a possibility. Thanks again for checking in and I'll see you in the next one.